In this morning's Health Watch, gene mapping. It's a relatively new technology, but it's managed to turn around the lives of a very sick brother and sister. Our medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, is here with their story. Good morning. And it's a great story, Erica. The decoding of the human genome was completed in 2003, but now for one of the first times, personal DNA sequencing has led to a life-changing treatment for a set of California twins, and it's all because of their mother's fierce determination. 14-year-old twins Alexis and Noah Beery look like typical teens today. Athletic, happy, full of energy. But it wasn't always this way. It was a household kind of under chaos. Not long ago, episodes like this were frequent. From birth, they suffered one mysterious illness after another. Alexis uh, never slept through the night. She had coordination problems. We had multiple visits to the emergency room for seizures. Uh, Noah threw up multiple times a day. At age two, the family was told the twins had cerebral palsy, but the Berries began to doubt the diagnosis. When you have cerebral palsy, you normally don't get any worse, and Alexis continued to get worse and worse. Right around age five, she started regressing and she started losing abilities that she had before. And at that point, I knew that something wasn't right. Retta went searching for answers and found this article that changed everything. And as soon as I read the article, I knew that was her. That was what she had. Sagawa dystonia, a rare movement disorder, is often mistaken for cerebral palsy. Retta took Alexis to a new doctor who confirmed her suspicions and treated Alexis with medication. The results were almost instant. For the first time in her life, she was able to get into a car on her own. She pulled a seatbelt down for the first time in her life. Then two years ago, a setback. Alexis developed severe breathing problems. We almost lost her a couple of times. We had the paramedics in our house trying to get her breathing again. Desperate, Retta went on the hunt again, eventually leading the family to Baylor College of Medicine, where a team of scientists mapped their entire genetic code with blood samples from the twins. We were able to zero in on the exact gene that was broken or wrong in the children that led to the disease. Dr. Richard Gibbs directs the Baylor Human Genome Sequencing Center. These twins were immediately able to be offered a new treatment that could benefit them and were able to say that directly from the DNA information. Their once disabling disorder is being treated with dopamine in addition to serotonin supplements. Noah and Alexis are now symptom free. The sequencing gave us answers. The sequencing gave us new life. Today, to see our kids um, doing all the things that we had only dreamed of is truly a miracle. It's amazing. It gives you goosebumps, as you just Absolutely. said to me, as we're watching it here. Obviously, an incredible outcome for Alexis and Noah. Who else, though, could benefit from something like personal gene mapping? Well, this is really the wave of the future, personalized medicine. But unfortunately, it's not for everyone. It's really most effective, Erica, when you're talking about a disease or a disorder where there's a single gene that's mutated or behaving properly. And we have to remember, genes turn on proteins, and that protein has an action. And in a disease, you either want to turn that on or off. And and that's where the targeted therapy becomes really effective. I imagine, though, that this is not inexpensive. It certainly is not. And according to Baylor, what, what they went through actually cost about $100,000. According to the National Institutes of Health, in some cases it can be done for $8,000. But again, the hope is, is that it might be available in the future for as little as $1,000. Think of it like when flat screen TVs first came mm -hmm. on the market. They were so expensive. The price has come way down. Hopefully we're going to be seeing that for gene therapy as well. Be crossing their fingers. Absolutely. Great story, though, Jen. Thanks. It really is.